everyone and welcome back to uh, continue our uh, uh, lecture about uh, uh, clinical pharmacology of gastrointestinal tract or gastrointestinal system. Uh, we already covered the peptic ulcer disease, uh, nausea and vomiting, uh, gastro gastroesophageal reflex uh, uh, syndrome uh, or disease. Uh, we move to the um, constipations and the next uh, maybe topics we cover in the, under this umbrella will be uh, treatment of diarrhea so we are going to mention the medication used to treat symptomatic uh, to treat symptoms as uh, maybe symptoms of diarrhea it's not like the cause uh, when you have causes we, you need to treat the cause of diarrhea for example when you have evictions you need to use antibiotic when you have parasite you need to use antiparasites Okay, here what we have in this slide. This slide uh, defined that the, what uh, what is diarrhea. Uh, diarrhea is a, a, like increased frequency or decreased consistency of the fecal fecal discharge, as compared with the individual pattern, uh, typical pattern. So we have increased frequency. We have increased uh, frequency of uh, fecal discharge or decreased consistency of fecal discharge. Uh, normally, if the patients are from diarrhea, this the diarrhea will be subside, will be a cure in one to day, two days without treatment. So if you have diarrhea, one to two days will be fine. Sometimes this is associated with a systematic, systemic disease uh, or considered like a symptom of systematic disease. And we are going to discuss that with you. For category and classification, uh, diarrhea could be classified as acute diarrhea if it persists less than three days, or chronic diarrhea if the diarrhea persists for the 14 days. Okay, so this graph here, okay, this graph here give us the guidelines how to approach patients suffer from diarrhea. Uh, as you can see here, depends on the situation. If you have it like a, a acute diarrhea less than three days, uh, we start ask the question or see the patient. Is the patient suffer from fever? If the answer no. If, is there any systemic symptoms? If the answer no, so the situation will be uh, try treat symptoms here. Try try to replace fluid and salts such as magnesium, sodium, and uh, chloride and other potassium, for example. We can prescribe lobiramide. We can ask the patient to follow a specific diet to maybe to re release the symptoms and recover from the diarrhea. Okay, the, the, another case here, if the patients are from acute diarrhea, but this situation associated with fever or and systemic uh, symptoms, uh, we go the f feces culture, feces a exam, look if, we, if the, the, the feces or stool contain white blood cells, red blood cells, any ova or parasites okay so if this the answer no we treat symptoms if the if the feces exam the stool exam culture negative we treat symptoms we go back again to the what we have here on the list okay and if the the, the test or the stool culture is positive we have some it, uh, maybe some parasites white blood cells red blood cells okay so start with the appropriate treatment here we treat the, the disease or the causes here. Okay, if the patient come to the clinic, suffer from more than 14 days of diarrhea, uh, this classify uh, or categorize like a chronic uh, diarrhea. We start to think about causes, could be eviction, could be irritable bowel disease, could be irritable bowel syndrome here. Uh, we go the diagnosis we, with uh, such as stool culture, colonoscopy, or biopsy, sigmodo, sigmodoscopy. So we, uh, if these result, all these result negative, okay, we only treat symptoms. Go to the first square, treat symptoms there. If the result positive, we treat the causative treatment there. So we go the what type do you have infection? We treat with antibiotic, antiparasite. Uh, do you have irritable bowel syndrome, for example, with diarrhea? We treat the symptoms. Irritable bowel disease, we have the two cases here talk about Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis. We are going to speak about that later on. Okay. Uh, traveler diarrhea, so we are going to mention some type of diarrhea here. Okay, for traveler diarrhea, according to the CDC, you can see it here, according to the CDC, 
Center for Disease Control and Prevention. They define the uh, travular diarrhea as a clinical syndrome that results from variety of intestinal pathogens. So travular diarrhea could be several type of pathogens. Could be bacterial related to the E. coli. This represents 80 to 90% of cases. So E. coli is the predominant of the bacteria. Could be viruses, 5 to 8%. They said could be protozoal, 10%. So the most the the most popular uh, cases related to the bacterial E. coli. So the second we we have protozoa. Third we have viruses. How to treat this patient there? So if they if you have bacteria diarrhea due to the bacterial bacterial pathogens, we go the cebrofloxacin, uh, rivaxamin, az az azithromycin. So three antibiotic could be used for bacterial. Uh, the travel at diarrhea, cybrofloxacin, rivaxamine, and azithromycin. Protozoal, such as uh, giardia and amibiasis, um, um, we have metronidazole, tenidazole. Uh, if we have patients up from annoyed diarrhea, we try to prescribe uh, some medication uh, to consider like anti motility medication, anti diarrhea medication, such as lobiramide and diphenoxalate. So we have several approach, as you can see here. And at the end, when the patient lo uh, maybe uh, lose a lot of uh, fluid, we recommend patient to, to maybe go the uh, oral rehydration therapy, ORS, fluid and electrolyte replacement there. So as you can see, we have several approach. Number one, bacterial pathogens go with the antibiotics, cyprofloxacin, rivaxamine, azithromycin, brotozoa, giardia, lambidia, for example, or amoebia go with the metronidazole or tinidazole. Okay, we have some uh, pain, uh, uh, diarrhea. We need to relieve the pain and stop the diarrhea. We s start using lobiramide or dif diphenoxylate. So we are going to focus on these two medications in the next coming slide. Two most important medications in the practice, lobiramide and diphenoxylate. Okay, so uh, again, this is from the website here. This is a summary for what we have. We have some some type of diarrhea called uh, called toddler diarrheas, uh, toddler diarrhea, and this is non-specific diarrhea. Uh, we don't have a specific cause for that, and this could affect the children in, in young age. And this is due to the causes here, possible cause, excessive fluid intake, uh, could be a carbo carbohydrate malabsorption. A lot of or large amount of fruit juice, or due to the immature digestive tract. So we have several causes for the, this uh, non-specific toddler diarrhea. Could be increased fluid, carbohydrate, malabsorption, and uh, increased amount of sugars, immature of digestive tracts. Okay, how to treat this patient? Uh, we have, as you can see, we don't have specific treatment. The treatment will be, if, according to the name, the treatment will be non-specific treatment. Change diet limit fruit juice and excessive fluid, avoid excessive fluid uh, intake, increase fiber in the diet. And we have it here from the uh, hospital and from the website, how to treat toddler with uh, suffer from diarrhea. So we have the first one, traveler diarrhea, three main causes. Then we have non-specific diarrhea, toddler diarrhea, treat the symptoms here, non-specific non treatment. Okay, what type of treatment available? The most important medication belong to the opioids. And this opioid, agonist opioids. So we use opioid effect, we use some medication stimulate opioid receptor. We have lobiramide stimulate opioid receptor. We, we use diphenoxylate stimulate opioid receptor. And you know that opioid cause constipation. Okay. And we have the term, uh, the abbreviation OIC, opioid induced constipation. They said, what happened if the patients of frontaria, we can use opioid agonist, opioid induced constipation. We have lobiramide and diphenoxylate. Then we have bismuth subsalicylate, not very popular in clinical use, but it's, it's effective in treating treatment of uh, diarrhea. Then we have uh, bile acid resin. Uh, we have cholesteramine, cholestibol, and cholestifilam. I refer you here to the lecture related to the uh, uh, anti-hyperlipidemia. And then we have actriotype. Okay, so we, we have less of medication, and but the most popular medication here, lobiramide and diphenoxylate. Okay, 
as you can see here we we have the lobiramide here you can a modium the brand name of modium and we have lobiramide okay lobiramide non-prescription otc you can buy it from the market no need for prescription otc non-prescription opioid agonist okay the advantages for this medication or the characteristic i don't like to uh, to call this one advantage we can call this one like uh, like characteristic characteristic could be positive could be negative uh, for the ammodium or like lobiramide okay the characteristic the features uh, okay this medication unable to cross blood brain barrier that means there is no risk of addiction number one no risk of addiction number two there is no effect on pain or relief pain we know that opioid used to relieve pain lobiramide uh, has no analgesic effect no pain relief and there is no risk of addiction from lubiramide. So lubiramide, non-prescription needed, no prescription needed, considered opioid agonist, and unable to cross blood barrier, this medication used to treat diarrhea. Okay, uh, physiological diarrhea, functional diarrhea. Okay, then we move to the next medication. We have diphenoxylate, and if you maximize the page here, you can see the diphenoxylate here, diphenoxylate, and this is associated with the atropine. So we have diphenoxylate plus atropine. We are going to explain why we use this combination in one tablet. Diphenoxylate prescription needed here. Diphenoxylate prescription needed. Diphenoxylate consider like opioid agonist. That's great. Number one prescription needed. Diphenoxylate, opioid agonist. No analgesic effect, but there is with a higher dose. There is there is a risk of addiction and dependence. So diphenoxylate. This is a reason. Diphenoxylate prescription needed for diphenoxylate because there is a risk of dependence and addiction. Okay, with the higher doses. Okay, moving what we have here in the in the in the practice in the clinical practice in the pharmacy, they combine diphenoxylate. They combine diphenoxylate with atropine. Okay, so we combine diphenoxylate with atropine. You can see it here. We have diphenoxylate and atropine and the brand name Lomot Lomotil. And this the combination treatment here, they said, okay, uh, the purpose here when you add atropine, atropine cause side effect. When you when you take large dose of atropine, when the patient tried to use a um, diphenoxylate for the uh, enhanced euphoria and the addiction purposes, when when you use large doses of diphenoxylate, large doses of atropine will be enter the body and cause annoyed symptoms. Okay, so in this case, annoyed symptoms will happen due to the atropine. So for this reason, the patient will stop use this medication due to the disturbing uh, symptoms. So we have now two medications, lobiramide, no prescription needed, opioid agonist, uh, unable to cross blood brain barrier, barrier, have no analgesic effect and no potential of addiction. On the other hand, diphenoxylate, uh, prescription needed, opioid agonist, no analgesic effect, but with higher doses may cause uh, addiction or dependence. For this reason, we combine this medication with the atropine to prevent dependence and addiction. Okay, so what we have here, the, the most popular medi medication, we discuss it with you, lobiramide and diphenoxylate, and we have modium lomotil, uh, then we move to the bile acid binding resin, bile acid binding resin, cholesteramine, cholestibol, and cholestivilam. Cholesteramine, cholestibol, cholestivilam may decrease diarrhea caused by excessive uh, fecal bile acid. When you have a lot of bile acid in the feces, uh, this medication may uh, decrease uh, diarrhea, treat, used to treat diarrhea due to the excessive fecal bile acid. Okay. Moving to the last medication in this list here, we have actriotide. So actriotide, actriotide, this medication consider, I'll move back again, actriotide, this is a medication to consider like mimic the effect or synthetic medication for somatostatin. Synthetic sim medication of somatostatin. Somatostatin, STT. Okay, we know that somatostatin uh, has inhibitory effect for the hormones. Which hormone will be inhibited by somatostatin?
okay i give you some time which hormone will be inhibited by somatostatin so the correct answer will be growth hormone so somatostatin produced from the hypothalamus and inhibit secretion of growth hormone okay so actriotide this medication here you can see it we have it several doses for act uh, for actriotide and uh, could be prescribed subcutaneous or intramuscular uh, actriotide decrease secretory secret secretory diarrhea secretory diarrhea caused by tumor carcinoid okay and by inhibition of uh, hormonal secretion uh, actriotide could be used to treat patients from agromegaly tumor pituitary tumor due to the agromegaly now we have the case study here the patient come to the clinic suffer from agromegaly you do the blood test you found the growth hormone very high and you uh, intend to prescribe some medication to inhibit a growth hormone which of the following medication you are going to prescribe actriotide so the correct answer will be actriotide okay the question now we have uh, active learning question uh, we have discussion the first one asks about which of the following drugs is the preferred for treatment of traveler diarrhea caused by amoebia amoebiasis traveler diarrhea caused by amoebiasis the first question for us what is amoebiasis bacterial or protozoal what do you think amoebiasis as like protozoal okay which one use for amoebiasis we have diphenoxalate we have metronidazole sucralfate uh, misoprostol codeine carbonate calcium carbonate lobiramide okay if you answer b you are correct metronidazole used for treatment of diarrhea and caused by amoebiasis okay moving to the next question which of the following anti-diarrhea drugs can lead to the opioid dependence by chronic use opioid dependence which of the following medication cause opioid dependence by chronic use diphenoxylate metronidazole sucralfate misoprostol codeine Pyramide. so which of these on the list consider like opioids okay it's not metronidazole it's not sucralfate misoprostol okay this one here opioid codeine is opioid lobiramide is opioid diphenoxylate is opioid so we have three medication belong to the opioid but we need to discuss that which one cause dependence okay okay i will i will cancel the for example i will use another color to for discussion as a lobiramide unable to cross blood barrier, barrier no risk of the addiction or dependence that's great uh, codeine codeine yes may cause dependence but codeine is not anti diarrhea drugs you agree with me with that so this one may cause dependence but it's not anti diarrhea drugs this is not correct diphenoxylate is the correct answer so the correct answer here will be dif diphenoxylate a okay here we have b okay the last one uh, which of the following drug can lead to the which of the following drugs can lead to the constipation by chronic use Which of the following drug can lead to the constipation by chronic use? Okay. What do you think about sucral fate? Yes or no? Sucral fate um, is saccharose and aluminum. Aluminum uh, cause constipation could be this one what about codeine 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 uh, opioid if you use opioid for long term may cause constipation okay calcium carbonate 
loperamide, yes, if you use the loperamide for long term, this will cause constipation. Diphenoxylate long term will cause constipation. So all these, if you use it for long term, may may be cause uh, constipation. So diphenoxylate, we use it for diarrhea, but if you remain, use this medication, the patient starts suffering from constipation. We need to use it for a limited time only. So long-term use could be lead to the constipation. Sucralfate, aluminum could be lead to constipation. Uh, codeine, the same. Lobiramide, the same. But the question now, what about misoprostol? Can you explain why misoprostol does not cause constipation? So for the number three, I will go, I will say A. Okay, number three, I will go with the C. Number three, I will go with the, what else, E. And then we have G for number uh, three, question number three. <clears throat> the question now for, for you, what do you think about misoprostol? And does misoprostol, does misoprostol cause constipation? Yes or no? Okay, if you answer no, you are correct. Uh, but we need explanation. Why misoprostol does not cause constipation? Okay, my superstall, my superstall, I will maybe bring some slide to show you what have. My superstall may cause diarrhea. So it will be the opposite for my superstall. <coughs> I'm sharing the screen for you for the my superstall and the brand name Cytotec. As you can see it here, this is a leaflet information about my superstall. I'm not going to discuss all details here because, because it's already covered in the peptic ulcer disease. But what we have here, we are discussing the diarrhea and constipation. Um, okay, I will type here uh, diarrhea. Then I will type constipation. It's mentioned only one place. Okay, so adverse effect and subject receiving cytotec 400-800 microgram daily in clinical trial, the most frequently side effect were diarrhea. So you can see here the most frequent side effect related to the misoprostol diarrhea and abdominal pain. So this explains why misoprostol uh, uh, does not cause uh, constipation. So here we need to remember here w why the, the maybe the question here the the answer is no okay the answer is no and what is my superstall my superstall is like prostaglandin analog okay next question uh, uh, your friend planning a three-week trip overseas and ask you ask for your advice re regarding medication for traveler diarrheas. And the following medication is effective and for diarrhea resulting from bacterial pathogens. So you ask about tra traveler diarrhea related to the bacterial. Which one are going to prescribe or recommend to your patient? Aluminum hydroxide, cyprofloxacin, misoprostol, metoclopramide, or mineral oil. Okay, what about the first one? Yes or no? Aluminum hydroxide. What is aluminum hydroxide? So the answer here is no. Aluminum hydroxide is antacid. We don't prescribe it. Okay, what about mineral oil? Mineral oil, what do you think? Laxative. So this one increase diarrhea or enhance diarrhea. We don't use it. Metoclobramide. If you listen and read the lecture about uh, nausea and vomiting so this medication for nausea and vomiting not for the diarrhea it's not correct misoprostol misoprostol cause diarrhea and we already discussed that with you it's not correct cyprofloxacin cyprofloxacin antibiotic so 
So we use cyberfluxacin for patients suffer from travular diarrhea due to the bacterial pathogens. Okay, at the end of this lecture, thank you so much for your listening and have a great day, everyone. Thank you.